When I was in school, I was taught that democracy is rule of the people, for the people, by the people. Is the definition still valid or am I old fashioned? If any of you go to a government office, do you expect to be treated like the ruler of this nation? Why do we call ourselves democratic? We don't satisfy the basic criteria. We call ourselves a democracy because we have a reasonably fair system of elections by which we are able to select people to our parliament and so on to rule the country. And it's a reasonably fair system. It gives, we've changed governments, changed leaders and so on. I would submit to you that having a fair system of elections and a constitution are necessary conditions for a democracy but are not the complete set of conditions. The heart and essence of democracy is the concept that each individual citizen is a sovereign in her own right and she gives a part of the sovereignty to the state in return for which she gets the rule of law. Sovereignty of the individual is the heart of democracy. At one such talk when I was with young people like you, very bright people, it's a privilege to be with this Indian group and thank you for giving me the opportunity. So at one such college, when I was giving a talk, one young student got up and said, Sir, but can the country run with 140 crore rulers? When you say ruler, you are like the Bacha or Begum of this nation. And I'm hoping at the end of this talk, you start believing you are the Bacha or Begum of this nation. But basically, I'm hoping that you start understanding and believing that you are the Bachas and Begums of India, each individual. So he said, sir, with 140 crore Bachas and Begums, can you run a country? How can you run a country? What I mean by Bachas and Begums, and I'll give you two examples of this. The first example is of the United States of America. I'm not saying everything there is fine, but they have a two century lead in terms of democracy. Any person, if he or she has applied for a green card, any immigrant from any other country has applied for a green card or citizenship of the United States, will easily pick up the phone and ask for the status of his application. And 99%, he will get a perfectly rational answer from the other side of the phone because a human being has called. In fact, I would submit that this concept is the basis of all human rights. Why should all humans have rights? Because we are sovereign, individually sovereign. In India, you are all first-rate Indian citizens. If you apply for change of address in your ration card and you have not received a response, most of you will not try and pick up the phone to talk to anyone. Even if you go to that office, your chances are 50% of getting a rational answer. That's what I mean by Bachshahs and Begums of this country. The second example is more stark. It's a story you all heard. But I'll give it a slightly different perspective. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi got inside the train in South Africa in 125 years back. He had a first class ticket, he got inside the first class compartment. There was a white man who he objected and therefore he was taken off the train. In the same story is written that Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi sent a complaint by telegram 125 years back, no mobiles, no internet, nothing. He sent a complaint by telegram complaining about what had happened to him. And it said that in 14 to 16 hours, a radio official came and put him on the next train. Think of the significance of this story. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was not a citizen of South Africa. By South African law then, he was not even a first-rate human being, he was a second-rate human being because he was a proud man. Despite that, he complains by telegram and in 14 to 16 hours, the system responds. Today, 2024, if you file a complaint with Indian Railways, forget 12 to 14 hours. In 12 to 14 days, if you get an acknowledgement, you will say, acknowledgement to Milzai. Somebody is acknowledging your letter. This is what I mean by Bachshahs and Begums of this nation. Respect for the individual human being is the basis and fundamental of all civilization, is the basis and fundamental of all progressive elements. If you are the ruler of this nation, everything belongs to you. The government belongs to you. This building belongs to you. Each individually, not necessarily that you must say, no, no, I was come with 10 people to demonstrate that. Individually, you own this place. Again, young people are fairly inquisitive. So at one such college where another student got up and said, sir, what are you talking about? I said, yes, I am strongly saying that you own the government. You own everything the government owns. 
said, sir, if I like a government car, can I take it home? I said, you can't take it home. He said, Phil, you're talking about it. How am I a ruler of this nation? How am I owner of the government? Why can't I take the car home if I own it? I said, that's because you are in partnership with 140 crore of the Indians. So if you take it away, you deprive the other 140 crore people. But, and this is important to understand, all the information in the files, computers of the government also belongs to you individually. And if that information is given to you, it can be given to 100,000 other people also. It does not deprive anybody else. All information in the computers, files, everything belongs to you. And you have a right to see it. And nations that adopt transparency better, become better governed nations with lesser corruption, lesser evils of misgovernance and so on. This has been established worldwide. This concept that all government information belongs to citizens was first transformed into a law in Sweden on 2nd December 1776, 250 years back. After that, for nearly one and a half centuries, no other country had such law. In the last one century, over 130 countries have adopted such transparency laws, recognizing citizens' right over government information. They go by three different names. Freedom of Information, FOI, Access to Information, ATI, and Right to Information, RTI. They are synonymous words for the same concept that all information belongs to you. So when you think of Right to Information, realize, feel the power that you are asking for something that belongs to you. That bag is yours. Do you need any permission to open that bag? No. Why? Because it's mine. Because it's mine. The government is also mine. Start believing it, start feeling that. And therefore, everything in the government's computers, files, etc. belongs to me. And I have a right over it. The Right to Information Act, incidentally, does not say what information can be given. It accepts and assumes that all information in default mode is, belongs to you. It only comes out a few exceptions which are necessary and which cannot be given because, for example, if the Indian Army is covered. If you ask about the army formations in the Galvan border, it could not be parted because it would not be possible for national security to operate. So there are a few exceptions. Apart from the exemptions, people quite often ask me, can I ask for this? Can I ask for that? I said, look at the exemptions. If it's not exempt, it's yours. The default mode is all information is yours. In India, the first right to information movement is supposed to have started in rural Rajasthan, not in cities. Three unique people got together. Aruna Roy, an IAS officer, young IAS officer at that time, she quit her job to work with the villagers, to work with rural India. Nikhil Day, a young US trained lawyer, 20 years young, younger to her, who also joined her. And the third was Shankar Singh, a man who stayed in that village in Thelonia, in uh, Devdungri village in Rajasthan. These three people started explaining to people their rights, what is democracy, etc. At one evening at the Chauraha, people were sitting and gabbing away as we quite often do about what's wrong with our country. And they were saying there's corruption in the government. Money that should come to us does not come to us. Government projects are gold-plated and so on and so forth. There was one Budi Amma. 80 year old, illiterate. She said, why don't you go and take a look at the papers? I am illiterate, but all of you are literate, young people. Go and take a look at the papers of the government. This is somewhere in the early 90s, 90 or 92. Who will show it to us? She said, I am the country of the country. And if I am the country of the country, then the money that the government has paid is mine. People felt some sense in it. They went to the BDO's office and said, we want to take a look at the accounts for the last two years. He threw them out. He said, Tum kaun collector ho, minister ho, tum samajhte kya ho apne aap ko? Get out. He had them pushed out of the office. Then dharna started. And the collector came, the minister came, and it was accepted that they had a right to look at those pages. 
and thereby started the first right to information movement in India. Then of course it grew into a national movement and became a law and so on and so forth. But the movement started in rural Rajasthan, remember. You don't need to be very literate, you don't need to be very educated. Simple concepts of democracy, if you understand, you can go very far. And from there started a slogan that has become the hallmark of the right to information movement. It says, Hamara paisa, Hamara hisab. Shall we say that? I'll say Hamara paisa, you will say Hamara hisab. Hamara paisa! Hamara hisab! That's true. Now, now we are going to understand and imbibe right to information as a fundamental right of ours. It's incidentally a fundamental right accepted by Supreme Court, accepted by everybody. But in implementation, we are very poor. In 2005, the national government passed this law and it became effective from 12th October 2005. I'll explain a few provisions of the, the key provisions of the law. The preamble of a law gives you the essence of it. So let's read this together. There is a constitution of India has established democratic republic. Whereas democracy requires an informed citizenry and transparency of information, which are vital to its functioning and also to contain corruption and to hold governments and their instrumentalities accountable to the governed. And whereas revelation of information in actual practice is likely to conflict with other public interests, including efficient operations of the governments, optimum use of limited fiscal resources and the preservation of confidentiality of sensitive information. Parliament was aware of these. Then there will be some problems some issues. And whereas it is necessary to harmonize these conflicting interests while presenting the paramount of the democratic ideal. Parliament has harmonized these into this law. Some people tell me, the law decides desh kaise chalega. Law is meant to be followed. It's not for each one to decide ki desh kaise chalega. Then it's a lawless country. What is information? This is something which I would like you to understand very well. Because if you don't understand this, I've seen people spending 10 years in RTI applications, not understanding what is information. Therefore, it's going to a loop. The definition is given there, records, etc., etc. But mainly what exists is information, what does not exist is not information. For example, if you say what is the meaning of this law, unless there is a record of it, they are not, it's right to in, information, not right to investigation. So PR is not expected to answer queries from you or clarify things for you. What is on record he must give you? What is on record in information? And of course it says information relating to any private body which can be accessed by a public authority under the law for the time being. What is public authority will be defined in the next slide. All public authorities have to give information to the citizens of India. Let's say some there is an institution that's not covered by the RTI Act. For example, a normal corporate housing society is not covered by the RTI Act. But information that they are supposed to give to the registrar of it, uh, cooperative societies can be accessed from there. Information that you give to government authorities, you may be a private individual, can be accessed through the government. That is any private body which is not covered under the RTI Act. Information which is, can be accessed in the normal course. Who has to give information? The law defines public authorities. Public authority means any authority or body or institution or self-government established or constituted by or A, B and C effectively cover everything that we call government. Local bodies, municipal bodies, panchayats, state government, central government. Also, there are bodies created by virtue of a law of parliament. For example, the IITs are created by a law made by parliament. Therefore, they are covered automatically. Sikh Gurudwara Prabhandak Committee is not a government body, but it's the existence of that is through a government law, which was passed by parliament. So they are covered. By notification issued or order made by the appropriate government, there are institutions that are recognized by notification issued by government. For example, all deep universities across the country are created by their private bodies theoretically, but they are created by notification issued by government and therefore they are public authorities. And includes any body owned, controlled or substantially financed, non-government organization substantially financed directly or indirectly by funds provided by the appropriate government. Mera paisa jahan laga, wo hamara paisa hamara hai. Words or the computer of any public authority, then it is information and you can access that. Taking inspection of work, documents, records. You can inspect work, you can inspect files. You can say I want to inspect files relating to A, B, C, D. Go to the government office, they will show you the files. You can take a look at it and you can take photocopies of whatever information you want to take away. 
when you inspect work also a young lawyer in mira bhaiender in outside mumbai he his name is vishnu gupta he did an interesting thing he said i want to inspect a government hospital so he got a list of all the costly equipment and took a round and inspected that and said oh this is not okay that is not okay that is not okay a report came and things got corrected like that for example if the road outside your house or outside your school or college is potholed or is in very bad condition if you ask why is this road bad they will say according to our records there is nothing that shows the road is bad so some people what people have done is they have said we have to inspect the road so with a municipal officer they go and inspect the road take photographs record the observations and that becomes the government record now which you can access which shows that the road is of bad condition anybody any citizen of india has the right to ask for inspection of road if i'm a student and i'm having a lot of things on my plate what is the bare minimum i can do to make things like if i have the information but how do i ask for inspection and the rti ask for inspection okay inspect create a record okay see once you do the inspection with a government officer it's a record created mm-hmm. which is a government files take it up complain about it to the authorities concerned if they are not listening pursue it if you can even if you can't pursue it the fact that you highlight something wrong it still starts putting pressure provided enough of us do it if one per- right now the number of people doing this is very small if number of a simple dream i have if 50 lakh 60 lakh indian citizens take a vow to file one rt application once a month on something that they believe is wrong and 10 to 15% of that will have effect not everything will work 10 to 15% only will lead to some change in the government one crore times a year there will be small changes in the government in fact to 10 years india will be a different country taking certified samples of uh, taking notes extracts of certified copies of documents or records this is what 90% of the rt applications do taking copies of records or extracts of records obtaining uh, taking certified samples of material you can also take samples of material if you believe a government hospital has got poor quality medicines you can take a sample and get it tested if you believe the concrete being used in a road is of poor quality you can get a sample and take it tested obtaining information in the form of diskettes etc cctv footage is included in this and this can be increasingly a very important source of information since we are multiplying our cctvs everywhere the most important section of the rti act is the shortest subject to the provisions of this act all citizens shall have the right to information who can have the right to information citizens of india why because hamara paisa hamara hisab principle applies can any information be refused philosophically since you own the information nothing can be refused to you but to run a country you have to keep some exceptions so these exemptions are spelled out in the provisions of this law but nothing else can be used to deny information only provisions of this law can be used to deny information section 4 is something that everybody in rti talks about especially commissioners and government officers we want to be transparent the law says actually everything should be transparent and visible to citizens everything that a government officer does and this is mentioned in 81a in section 41a maintain all, all public every public authority shall maintain all its records duly cataloged and indexed in a manner and form which facilitates the right to information under this act and ensure that all records that are appropriate to be computerized are within a reasonable time and away subject to availability of resources computerized and connected through a network all over the country on different systems so that the access to such records is facilitated i underline this because this in my opinion if this is really followed pursued it can change the face of governance in country today 18 years later after the act came into being computers are there almost everywhere all village panchayats have computers at least in maharashtra there are 28000 village panchayats each one having a computer some level of internet connectivity and one person employed just to use the computer so the facility exists fair enough we have understood what is information what is right to information who has to give information from who do i seek it this law elegantly describes and says each office each administrative unit of a public authority 
will appoint a public information officer. He is not specially doing that job. He has doing some other function. He also takes this additional responsibility. So any IT application is to be addressed to the public information officer of an administrative unit where you think the information may be there. You don't need to know his name. Don't put his name also. Because sometimes if he gets transferred, the other chap says, it never came to me. Address it to the public information officer. The law requires every administrative unit to have a public information officer. And the public information officer must, he may not have all the information himself. He must gather it from his various officers and send it to you. He is the one man responsible for doing this. In case it's not, he does not respond, etc., which happens quite often. You go into a first appeal before a first appellate authority who is officer senior to the public information officer. He's, it gives the department a chance to think about it again. If that is not satisfactory, you go to the commission. A person who desires to obtain any information in this action make a request in writing or through electronic means, English or Hindi or in the official language of the area. You can make your application in any one of these three languages. The response will come in the language that the office is comfortable with. You can't say, I have applied in English, so you must apply, you must apply in English. An applicant making request for information shall not be required to give any reason for requesting the information or any other personal details except those that may be necessary for contacting him. A lot of government officers say this is an unreasonable provision. Without any reason, there are courts also which have said this is unreasonable. What do you think? Without any reason, is it okay to harass a government officer? The more the opacity, the greater the corruption, the greater the wrongdoing. Information cannot be misused, is my contention. If it is showing what is on record. If, for example, you ask a, a mutual officer, on this plot, is a building being sanctioned? What's the building plan? Supposing no plan has been sanctioned and the building is coming up, he will respond and say, there's no, no record of this. So you know it's an illegal building. I would submit that you, know, you should not give any reason. It's an absolutely legitimate requirement. Because it is mine. On receipt of a request under Section 6, PR shall as is possible and in any case within 30 days of the receipt of the request, either provide the information on payment of such fee as may be prescribed or reject the request for any of the reasons specified in Sections 8 and 9. Only Sections 8 and 9 can be used to reject and Section 9 covers copyright or intellectual property right. The way the structure works is you file an application with an application fee typically of 10 rupees. In most cases, Indian postal order works as your fee. So you get an Indian postal order, attach it to your RT application and submit it. If the PIO feels that they've got the information and say it's 200 pages, he can charge you two rupees per page. So he'll send you a letter saying the information is 200 pages. Therefore, please pay 400 rupees. You must pay the 400 rupees and then you'll get the information. And the 30-day period that this law talks of, I'll explain a little later how, how it is to be calculated. Physically, some offices have very queer procedures. So there will be certain office which will say, I'll give you a chalan. I won't take cash. You go there to the government treasury, pay the rupees there, stand in a queue over there. So it's messy. But it can be done. But there must be uh, uh, many uh, requests for information would result in a lot of work in getting at that information, right? No, think about it logically. Why is the record kept anywhere? Any office, forget government office. Why is there a record to refer to it, right? If it takes a lot of effort to get to it, you can't access it. You will not access it. So if you are keeping the record, it should be easily accessible. So, I hope you'll come to that when we kind of talk about what kind of RTI applications would like. For instance, if I want to know how much money has Mumbai spent on fixing potholes on all its roads. Ask BMC huh. how much money has been spent on, it may not say potholes, repair of roads. Okay. It will be a general term. And then you'll have to dive into a specific thing or, or you say on this road. Details of repairs spent on this so, road. So, can I say all the roads in all of Bombay or do I have to break it up into lots of RTI requests? No, depending on, you see, if you want, wise and all if that you kind want of stuff. total, you hmm. get a total. You should get a total. But if you say potholes, then you are into dicey territory because it may not define just a pothole. 
It means they have road repair. I am not sure under what heading they call it. So if they have a heading of potholes, then they should give it to you. But if they have a heading saying repairs of roads, which is likely. So there you have to, sometimes my, my first RTI application was in 2003, before this act came, in the Maharashtra Act was there. I first heard the name RTI at a meeting somebody had called of activists. And someone said, Maharashtra has a good right to information act. I said, what is the right to information? I didn't know. So I learned about it, find my first RTI application, asking for names and of ministers, MPs and MLAs who had recommended police transfers. So they didn't give it to me. They blocked me. So that became an interesting game of chess. I'd file an appeal, file another RTI. In six months, the list was out. So sometimes one RTI leads to the next one. Okay, 30 day period, PIO receives RTI application day one. After X days, PIO sends a letter asking additional fees, 30 day clock stops. Additional fees paid, 30 day clock starts. Information sent out to Y days, X plus Y less than or equal to 30 days. Party application is transferred. Supposing you've given it to a different department. You thought the information would be with the municipal department. You ask the PIO at the municipal department. Supposing it's with the police department, not with the municipal department. Then can he reject it? The answer is no. The law says you are the sovereign. Bachai Abegam ko rejection nahi de sakte ho. You transfer it to the right PIO and inform the applicant. If it's transferred, then you deal with the new PIO, not the earlier one. So can RTI applications be done online? Yes, a lot of departments are po it's possible. Central government has got a portal. Uh, Maharashtra state government has a portal. Other state governments, I'm not too sure. And there are some, for some peculiar reasons, they are not part of this portal. For example, Municipal Corporation of Mumbai is not part of the state government portal. Whereas Municipal Corporation of Pune, Akola, Yavatmal, all of them are on the state portal. The next two, three slides, I've got some RT applications, which I have made, which tell you in brief, ask for a record and how you can make it effective without giving reasons. And a few tips, do not taunt anybody. Do not, because that PIO is not responsible at all. I've seen a lot of RT applications where people feel, ah, you people are doing like this, you are doing like that. It puts off a person. Don't make it very wrong. I once came across one RT application with 17 pages. So keep it short and brief. These are some examples. If you want to inspect files, this is a format I'm suggesting. I want to inspect files relating to so-and-so. I will bring Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so to assist me in my inspection. Please suggest two dates with the time at which I could come for inspection. I will identify the documents for which I want photocopies of the time of inspection. Please ensure that the pages of the files are numbered. Page is must be numbered in a government file. Otherwise, they'll take out a few pages and you will not know what happened. Likely outcomes of RT application. PR sends letter asking for further fees to be paid and information obtained by satis applicant satisfactory outcome. You get a letter from PR transferring your application to so and so for further communications will be sent with the PR to whom RT is transferred. You get a letter from PR refusing to give information, quoting an exemption. If you feel exemption is justified, accept the decision. If you feel PR Feel refusal is not justified. File a first appeal within 30 days. You must state reasons why you think refusal is not justified. PR asks you to come for an inspection, refer to SIC orders. PR does not respond at all. This is a deemed refusal without any reason. File a first appeal after 35 days and before 60 days of the RT application. Entry Who's the first appellate authority? How do I know? His, his office also may not be the same office as the PIOs. So the law says that the PIO must, in his response to you, give you the details of the first appellate authority. If it does not respond at all or does not give you the details, what do I do? Simple technique is send the first appeal to the first appellate authority care of public information officer. Right in that, the law requires you to give me the details of the first appellate authority. Since you have not done that, you will now have to forward it to the first appellate authority and it works. RTI is a fundamental right of citizens under Article 19, 1A, which guarantees freedom of speech and expression. Various Supreme Court judgments have held that this includes right to information and right to publish. Remember one thing, we say media is the fourth pillar of democracy. In the Constitution of India, you find no mention of the media or the right to publish. It arises out of Article 19, 1A. 
my submission is everything that applies to freedom of speech everything that applies to freedom to publish applies to rti also if i am asked to give reasons for uh, filing an rti application then i should be asked to give reasons for speaking bolne ke pehle i have to go and file a application saying mujhe bolna hai mujhe permission milegi kya if i want to publish something i have to go and justify why i want to publish the now any restrictions on my fundamental right have to be laid down in the constitution beyond that no law can restrict anything restrictions have to be in line with art, the constitution because they are restraining my fundamental right the only permissible restrictions are given in article 192 which permits reasonable restrictions in the interest of the sovereignty and integrity of india security of the state friendly relations with foreign states public order decency or morality on relation to contempt of court defamation or assigned by drone offense a lot of information nowadays it's become fashionable and there are historical reasons why things are being refused in the name of privacy everything is privacy now in article 192 can you identify what words would apply to privacy will sovereignty and integrity of india apply to privacy i would submit there are only two words decency or morality if something violates decency or morality then it should be considered invasion on privacy the putta swami judgment has created a frankenstein they've got a 550 page order you read the whole order you can't make out what is privacy it says privacy is a fundamental right of citizens but privacy kya hai the supreme court says in its judgment it will be decided on a case to case basis so the way i imagine that pio gets something he doesn't know whether it relates to privacy or not he was going to the supreme court and say sir ye privacy hai ya nahi hai completely unworkable and in the name of privacy a lot of things are being denied now kisi ka naam privacy salary privacy everything is now becoming and being called privacy exemptions just understand properly if you understand the exemptions this is the only information that can be refused to you all the information has to be given not withstanding anything contained in this act there shall be no obligation to give any citizen information disclosure which would prejudicially affect the sovereignty and integrity of india the security strategic scientific or economic interests of the state relates to the foreign state or lead to incitement of an offense this is a mouthful but the pio must say which interest is likely to be hurt and how he must give some reasons he cannot just say it only one interesting case before me instantly can be exceed the time limit uh, there was one instance where somebody had asked for madhav gargins report on environmental issues of western ghats there were some issues on the western western ghats stretch from maharashtra go down to kerala so there were some issues government set up a committee at that time asking dr madhav gargil a very reputed environmentalist to conduct a study and made recommendations which he did which would say that a lot of mining activity and other activities of forest cutting etc would harm the ecology very badly government was not too happy with it so they put it under the table and carried on doing what they wanted to somebody asked for a copy of this report and the pio said 81a the matter came before me so i said how 81a what what will get affected you tell me na is it nahi sir 81a is it okay i'll spell it out will it prejudicially affect the sovereignty and integrity of india he said no sir the security strategic scientific or economic scientific interests of the state no sir economic interests of the state above fasia because if he didn't say yes to this he could not say it lead to incitement of an offense so he said yes sir economic interest so i said fair enough now you have fairly long let's which consider a kind of landmark judgment arguing that if environmental people want a report it is your duty to provide it nation will judge what to do with it seeing it will hurt economic interest supposing it is going to hurt the ecological interest things may go wrong very terribly and if you speed that up you may damage things beyond control and if the advantage is there and there is no great value to ecology the advantage will remain even after 50 years 50 years later maybe it will be exploited economically this is a key point because of the uh, government going very uh, hard on mining in forests and virgin forests and stuff like that right 
So when he says that the disclosure would prejudicially affect affect the economic interests of the state, the state might want to give some areas of the forest for mining and stuff like this, which would improve the economy of the state. Which means that probably 50 years later, if there's going to be greater... In fact, the Kerala floods are supposed to be consequences of that. Of the Western Ghat being ecologically destroyed. My argument was... See, they say economic interests of the state. There's no respect for ecological for ecological interests of the no, state. No. So that side came to me and huh. I had argued that the government released the report. They gave the report. They did not fight it in the courts, fortunately. Okay. My argument, I can send you the detailed argument. My argument was if there is something that will damage the next generations, we have no right to do that. And supposing there is no damage to the considerations of society and the nation, even 10, 20 years later, it can still be exploited economically. If there's copper, you'll get copper after 20 years also. It'll get delayed by 20 years. That's all there is to it. But if you do any ecological da damage, it cannot be retrieved. But now there's an environmental law which has been changed, isn't it? Which says that... Uh, uh, no, no. So I'm not arguing. I'm saying uh, let people know. Okay. People have a right to know. That's all I'm saying. What should happen out of that is... For the government to decide. But people's right to know is paramount. These are the Bachchas and Begums of this nation. They have a right to know. And then decide what is right or wrong. Information which has been expressly forbidden to be published by any court of law or tribunal, the disclosure of which may constitute contempt of court. Do you know what is subjudice? Matter is in court, it's called subjudice. Can information relating to subjudice matters be given in A1B? A lot of reactions are done on A1B saying matter is in court, hence we will not give information. Parliament did not use the word subjudice. They said expressly forbidden. So if somebody quotes A1B, show, ask him to show the express order of a court saying this information shall not be released. Only if there is a specific order of the court saying this information shall not be released, Information has to be provided. Subjects can be no ground for rejecting information. See, the disclosure of information, the disclosure of which would cause a breach of freedom of parliament or state legislature. For example, budget papers. If you ask before the budget, it cannot be given. Commissions of inquiry. The law says, Commissions of inquiry act says that within six months of a presentation of a report, it should be put on the table of the legislature or the parliament. If that is not being put, they often claim that this will be a breach of privilege. I had argued in my own case, that there was a, have some of you heard of the other scam in Mumbai, other housing society. So I had asked for that report. Maharashtra government had not published that report. So I, I, I let six months elapse. Then I asked for that report. They said breach of privilege. I said, you already breached the privilege of legislature. The other building was meant for people who had died in the war. And these flats had been given away to bureaucrats, other powerful people, etc. So there's a furore. What governments quite often do is set up a commission of inquiry and say, okay. The Commissions of Inquiry Act actually says uh, one more example of how our laws are not followed. Commissions of Inquiry Act says report has to be given in six months' time. They keep giving extensions. One absolutely shameless commission, I think it was called the Liberman Commission, straight for 18 years. After 18 years, what good is the report? So the Arash committee gave a report after two years. The government found it and named ministers and bureaucrats as being responsible for the scandal. The government didn't want to release it since it would damage the reputation of these people. So they kept it under and forgot all about it. I asked for a copy of this report after six months. They said, this is breach of privilege of legislature. We have not placed it in the legislature. I argued that since you already breached the six month period laid down by law, you already breached the privilege of legislature. Now you can't say we are breaching. They agreed they are an untenable stand. So what they did was a smart move. They tabled it in the legislature and gave me the report. So, Commission of Inquiry reports also can be obtained even if the government does not want to give it, provided they are playing by the law.
Sometimes illegally they take things and the judiciary takes years and years and years. Information including commercial confidence, trade secrets or intellectual property, the disclosure of which would harm the competitive position of a third party. It was satisfied to, for example, if you ask for the formulation of Coca-Cola from FDA, most probably FDA may be having it. But they won't give it to you because of A20D. It will harm their commercial interests and this is commercial confidence. But a tender, once it is issued, when the work has been given, you cannot claim that competitive interest will be hurt. So after a tender is awarded, it should be given. E, information available to a person is fiduciary relationship. What's a fiduciary relationship has been misinterpreted quite often. Any of you know what's fiduciary? In this context, Information is provided by somebody to someone with superior knowledge of a subject for his or her own benefit. My bank customer relationship, lawyer customer client relationship, doctor patient relationship, these are fiduciary relationships. I give information to my doctor about my health. Doctor is supposed to keep it secret and not share it with anybody else, but I can take his advice and show it to 100 people. Fiduciary relationship is one way. I have a choice of who to go to. In most cases, information with government, I have no choice. I have to provide it. It's not done out of choice. I have no choice of selecting people. So 99% of the information with government is not held in a fiduciary relationship. This is a bogey. But on the other hand, suppose you go and ask Bank of India, and I have an account at Bank of India and say, I want to sell it all these transactions. That is held by a fiduciary relationship. They cannot give it to you. Or you go to, if I've gone to a government hospital, and you say that, give me Gandhi's medical records. You can't be given because it's fiduciary relationship. Information received in confidence from foreign government. This is the only one where no reasoning is applied. It's, said it's given in confidence by foreign government. It's exempt. This is the only place where confidentiality or sensitivity is used. Nowhere else is this used. Information the disclosure of which would endanger the life or physical safety of any person who identifies the source of information or assistance given in confidence for law enforcement or security purposes. If information is given which disclosure could lead to endangering somebody's life or physical safety, then obviously it can't be given. It is case to case. This has to be looked at. Information which will impede the process of investigation or apprehension or procedure of offenders. If an investigation is ongoing, can information be given according to 8 one h Parliament has used the word impede. They did not say that ongoing investigation is there. Even if an ongoing investigation is there, unless it can be shown that releasing this information will impede the process. Cabinet papers, including records of deliberations of the Council of Ministers, Secretaries and other officers, provided that the decisions of Councils of Ministers, the reasons thereof and the material on the basis of which the decisions are taken shall be made public after the decision has been taken and the matter is completed over. This is a unique exemption, which says until a particular point in time, it is exempt. After that, it asks the government to release the information to the public. For example, if a bill is presented in parliament, before the bill is presented, there may be internal discussions. And if you ask for that information, that should be denied to you until the decision is taken. Once the bill is presented in parliament, cabinet has taken a decision, we want to present it to parliament, then it's parliament's property. And therefore, in my opinion, within a few days, government is obliged to publish the information, suo moto, without even waiting for an RT application. Their opinion is, nahi, nahi, nahi karne ga. Nahi karenge. I had given an order, there was a Nuclear Safety Regulatory Act, which the earlier government had presented. My commissioner's time was 2008 to 2012. It's all in the earlier government. So they presented this bill to parliament. Somebody had asked for a copy of the discussion in cabinet. PR refused saying eight one I. I looked at that and said, yes, until the time the decision is taken. Cabinet decided to present the bill. So that decision is over. And once the decision is over, within seven days, it should be published and given to citizens. That time they gave it. Six months later, they went and challenged the decision. It's pending in some court somewhere. God knows where. Information which relates to personal information, the disclosure of which has no relationship to any public action to your interest or which would cause unwanted invasion of the privacy of the individual, provided that the information that shall not be denied to parliament or state legislature shall not be denied to any person. A plain reading of this, it's simple English. If it is personal information, it may qualify under exemption section 81J. But there are, parliament has put other conditionalities. The disclosure of which has no relationship to any public activity or interest. 
99% of the information with government is the consequence of a public activity. When you do something publicly with the government, it's a public activity. Or which would cause unwarranted invasion of the privacy of the individual. This is where the Puttaswami judgment comes in. Puttaswami, they gave a ruling, privacy is fundamental right. And what is privacy? Undefined. Parliament was aware of this. Therefore, we put a clause saying, provided that the information that shall not be denied to Parliament or state legislature shall not be denied to any person. To deny personal information, a public information officer or appellate authority or commissioner must say, A, it is personal information. B, it is it's a public activity or not a public activity. C, it's invasion on privacy or not invasion on privacy. Then there can be differing opinions. I would concede that. But this proviso that the information which cannot be denied to parliament or state legislature shall not be denied to any person. How is it to be used? Supreme Court has also denied information based on 820J. Horrifyingly, in the infamous judgment, the first infamous judgment on this count, this did not mention this proviso at all. They just skipped it. And what should it cover? It should cover, starting with 192, information that is violative of decency or morality is in the private region and should not be covered. At one panel discussion, one retired Supreme Court judge said, Mr. Gandhi, you mean tomorrow you will ask what I ate for lunch? I said, sir, what we ate for lunch is not in government records. But if you have given the bill to government, then I have a right to that. <laughs> if you eat at your house, eat in the restaurant, eat it, you can eat it. I have no right over it. But if it's recorded in the government, then I have a right on it. Not with sending anything in the official secrets act, nor any of the exemptions permissible in accordance with subsection 1. Public authority may allow access to information if public interest and disclosure outweighs the harm to a protected interest. If an exemption applies, then you can still argue and say there's a larger public interest in disclosure. What kind of example? Arbitrary example I'm giving. For example, let's say Nira Modi's transactions with Punjab National Bank. If you were to go and ask for details of the transactions, Punjab National Bank could legitimately refuse saying it's a fiduciary relationship. You could argue that there's a major scandal that has occurred. Therefore, there's a larger public interest. It has to be weighed. It's a tough choice. It's not easy. Subject to the provisions of A, C and I, information relating to any occurrence, event or matter which has taken place or occurred or happened 20 years before the date on which any request is made shall be provided to any person making a request in simple terms. After 20 years, only three exemptions apply, A, C and I. The other seven exemptions do not apply. The Digital Personal Data Protection Act, Supreme Court said, through the first stone in 2011 or 12, saying if it's personal information, it can be refused. The DPDP bill, which is now an act of parliament, amends 81J, thus it talks of amending the RTI Act, saying information related to personal information is exempt. All the other words which I have put in red are deleted. Now that can make it a right to deny information because most information can be related to some person or the other. So I see a great danger to RTI unless that one crore people wake up and do something. This would make it right to deny information. I call it RDI. I'm hoping someday in the future we'll go back to the original purity of the law. These are quoted just to show how 81J is wrongly interpreted. First appeal to first appellate authority within 30 days. For not getting information, incomplete information or wrong information. First appellate authority should decide in 30 oblique 45 days. If result of first appeal not satisfactory, second appeal filed to the commission within 30, 90 days. Section 19.5 says onus on PI with the denial of information was justified. Legally speaking, the applicant does not have to justify why he wants information. There's only one exception to this. If an exemption applies and the applicant concedes that an exemption applies, but he's arguing of a larger public interest. Then he has to explain how a larger public interest applies. But in actual practice, it is useful to give reasons why information should be given or denial of information is illegal. In my opinion, that is all that is required to be done. To get the response and see if information has been provided, information can only be denied if it's not available, if it is exempt under section eight or nine or file not found. If they say we can't find the file, my standard used to be file a FIR with the police. Go and file a complaint with the police. They used to say, sir, file ke liye complaint karega? I said, that's government property. Tomorrow table, 
गाय हो जाएगा तो क्या करोगे और फाइन इज लॉस लिटरली ये मिलता नहीं है आई से आई एम सेंग इट्स टोल यू टेल मी वाई यू आर सेंग इट्स नॉट टोल इफ यू कैन सी इट देन यू गिव इट इफ यू कैन सी इट इट कुड बी स्टोल ऑल्सो सो इफ समी सेज फाइन नॉट फाउंड इन सेज दैन दे गिव अ कंप्लेन टू द पुलिस सेंग फाइन नॉट फाउंड फाइन has been lost section 20 is the teeth of the act this is the reason the act was actually very effective in the initial days if com- information denied without reasonable cause commission must penalize the pio or dmp pio at rupees 250 per day of delay to give you an opportunity of explaining maximum penalty rupees 25000 i had a record in the self information commission which is still unbroken i had pen- penalized 520 officers it's totaling 98 lakh rupees section 22 the provisions of this act shall have effect not extending anything inconsistent there with Contained in the Official Secrets Act, and any other law for the time being in force. This overrides all other laws as far as RTI is concerned. It does not override other laws, but in terms of giving of information, information can only be denied based on this law, not based on other laws. Putting it in a nutshell, RTI application information in 30 days. If no response provided, or unsatisfactory response, first appeal to be filed within 30 days of response, or 60 days in case of no response. First appeal to authority order after hearing up within 45 days. Unsatisfactory order or no reason. Second appeal to commission in 90 days of first appeal to authority, or 120 days from first appeal. Where do you go to get a form? You don't get a form anywhere. You, any plain piece of paper is your form. You can type it, you can computer generate it, or you can do a handwritten one, provided it's in legible handwriting. This is a story of RTI in the initial days. Gives you some ex- exposure to what it can be like. This is a story of a young. Boy from Bihar, who had come to Mumbai looking for a job. He was going around, and he heard of an RTI workshop being conducted in the Basti. People like me conduct workshops in Bastis, housing societies, schools, colleges, wherever. So he sat down in the workshop, understood what is right to information, what is information, who can give information. He was applied to the public information officer, ten rupee application fee must give, etc., etc. And he understood that he moved on. Then he got a job somewhere. He wanted a ration card. And in those days, there was no Aadhaar card also, so that was the only proof of existence for somebody in, staying in a basti. So he applied for the ration card, and as he was going out of the door of the rationing office, the pew ne costed him and said, "Ab ko ration card chahiye kya?" He said, "Ah, bhai, usi liye to form bhare." The pew said, "Chai pani lagega." This boy said, "Thik hai, aapko chai pila dunga." The pew said, "Nee, nee, chai pilaane ki baat nahi hai." He said, "Ab bol rahe chai pani to aur kya karunga?" He said, "Two thousand rupees lagega. Tab toh aap ration card banega." This boy, without batting an eyelid, made a statement that always makes me feel very proud. He said, "I won't let him go." The pun struck. He said, "Stupid chap, coming from Bihar, Lalu ki yahan se aata hai, kuch akal to hai nahi. Tere ko is jalam mein ration card nahi milega." Ja. This boy went back. He checked others coming from villages were all paying two thousand rupees and getting the ration card in about forty forty five days. He waited three months and then he filed this RTI application. I had given an application for a ration card on fifth August two thousand six. I want the following information about its progress in the following format: date on which application received, name and designation of the officer receiving it, action taken, date on which forwarded to the next office. It is a photocopies of all letters and notings to be provided. I want a list of ration cards issued in the last two months, giving the dates on which the applications were made, the dates on which the ration cards were issued. You only asked for a copy. You didn't say, "Bye, I not got my ration card." That was his real thing. But this information would put it on paper that there was corruption. There was no reason. F- What could they say? Tomorrow. एप्लीकेशन मूव ही नहीं हुआ है चाय पानी नहीं दिया है नेक्स्ट डे दून केम टू हिज हाउस एंड सेल साहब ने बुलाया है ही वेंट टू द रैशनिंग ऑफिस एज सुन इज एंटर्ड द ऑफिसर से अरे अरे इनके लिए कुर्सी लेके आओ और इनका राशन कार्ड और एक कप चाय और एक गिलास पानी लेके आओ ही डिड नॉट गिव चाय पानी ही गॉट चाय पानी इन स्टेड एंड टू माई माइंड दट कप ऑफ टी वॉज रिस्पेक्ट फॉर दॉप इंडियन सिटीजन that is what it represents more than anything else this technique has been used thousands of times for getting income tax refunds for getting movement on investigations for getting complaint recorded and so on and so forth okay here's another application i am showing you with a first appeal this was made by me one fine day and i opened my times of india In those days i used to read the newspapers the front page had a photograph of citizens demonstrating in marine drive in mumbai Because on police constable Morey had raped a minor. Same day, on page five, there was a small news item. The small news item said, "Police Inspector Prakash Abre, Mumbai Police raped a minor the earlier year. He was suspended from service. 
case was filed against him. The magistrate released him because there was not enough evidence. And he was being reinstated in the Bobby police. When you read something like this, you feel angry. I felt angry. So I said, what can I do? Can I use RTI? So I filed this RTI application. According to the news report in Times of India dated 29 April, Inspector Prakash Avre was accused of raping a minor girl in 2000, September 2005. He was acquitted by the Sessions Court in February and has been reinstated in service. I want a photocopy of the order release, reinstating him along with the final notice based on when the decision was taken. I did not say, why are you doing this, that or the other. I just said I wanted a record, which would illustrate what decision making went into this. The PIO refused and I filed a first appeal, ground floor appeal, facts of the case. I had asked for information regarding the reinstatement of Inspector Prakash Avani as per the attached application. PIO first sent me a letter stating that the information would be provided by Vaikara Police Station. PIO Vaikara replied by letter of 165 that the information could not be provided as it was exempt under Section 81H, which exempts information should impede the process of investigation or apprehension of prosecutors or offenders. Grounds for appeal. PR has not shown how providing the information could impede any investigation. In fact, no investigation has been held since Prakash Aurel has been reinstated. The rejection is without any basis in law. I have gone for the first appellate hearing. Usually in an appeal, they call you to hear your side. The very good deputy commissioner of police. Now, this is in 2006. I was not an information commissioner. Nobody knew me. I was like any ordinary citizen of Mumbai. But the officer was really a good officer. I, I want to show what is possible when you have good officers and how citizens support them. So he said, Mr. Gandhi, what could we do? The court has released him. I said, no, sir, from my point of view, there are two possibilities. Either Prakash Aure is guilty of the crime he's alleged to have committed, in which case reinstating him would be great disservice to the police department itself and to the citizens of Mumbai. Alternatively, he was he is innocent. Somebody framed him. Somebody framed him. He should be held responsible. Ye kya baat hai? Nobody killed Jessica Lal Jesse baat ho He saw the point I was making. He said, Mr. Gandhi, let me see what I can do. In 20 days, I got a writing from the police commissioner's office of Mumbai that police inspector Prakash Aure had been dismissed from service. That is the power of right to information that any one citizen can exercise. And he, it, it, it had nothing to do with me. It was that there was a good officer who saw the point. There are good officers also. They need support from citizens. RTI gives them that support. My submission to you is file one RTI application, take a vow, file one RTI application once a month, every month. Or pick up some of this cause. But let us all spend one hour or two hours a month to something concerning the country, concerning the system not working properly. Instead of just attacking individual corrupt cases, let's attack the system. See, where is the system going wrong? How can I correct the system? That will bring change. And that would definitely bring change. One gentleman of my age at one such workshop got up and said, Mr. Gandhi, I have done 10 years a lot of complaints, a lot of RTI, there is nothing in India, there is nothing in India, there is nothing in India. To such friends, I say, all of us, many of us, go to Mandir's, Masjid, Gurdwara's, Agyaris, once in a day, once in a week, once in a month, maybe once a year. When you go there and come out, is an extra hundred rupee note in your wallet? No. Why do we do it? We do it as an act of faith. You can see no logical connection. It's an act of faith that by doing this, something good will happen to me, my family, my society, my city, my nation. What do we do for the nation as an act of faith? 75 years back, we threw out a foreign government. This is our own government. We can certainly do it, provided we have the bill. Mera Bharat Mahan, we say, we write, we say, we say, we say, we don't really believe it, do we? Therefore, I say, Mera Bharat Mahan is not here. Mera Bharat Mahan is not here, but this is my fault. I, the individual sovereign, am responsible. Each one of us. If you feel that ownership, if you feel that responsibility, India will change for the better. And pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. In US, if you make a call, they answer you right away. So what do you think those countries are doing better? That and The citizen is exercising, the, the human beings there are exercising their right. They will not accept anything lower.
judicially or law wise what is right oh, judiciary wise let me give you a simple example we talk of article 4, uh, 21 like right to life and liberty in the us 20% of the people in prison are under trials in india 75 to 80% are under trials we don't bother about it in fact i see more notices of people fighting for animals being put into cages than for people being put into cages we have to develop that sensitivity i find uh, i did a small survey once and i realized that almost all indian citizens crip for about two hours every month about what is wrong it can change nothing it will change nothing my request to all everyone is out of that two hours of crip time continue gripping for one hour if it's good for your mental and physical health one hour you devote to saying something for the nation i will do RTI application, do something else. I mean, not necessarily RTI. There's a park in front of my house. So they recently re renovated it. And uh, so a lot of people, there's a lot of attraction. So there are a lot of people coming to the park and uh, they park the vehicles right in front of the park and the road is pretty narrow. So it causes a lot of traffic. I was a little confused on who to file, uh, like what information should I get? Should I get information for the authorities who are responsible for maintaining these parking rules on the roads or the park, park which is a government uh, uh, controlled park? So for uh, should I ask information about them not giving proper parking facilities? For, for something for like this, yeah. the better route is to start with a complaint. Okay. Complaint to the authority. Hmm. Two authorities are required saying that this is causing traffic congestion. Okay. If they don't respond, which is very likely, huh. after four or six weeks, file an RT application saying, what is the progress of my complaint? Okay. What action have you taken? Mm. That should bring pressure. Some of these things, you know, continued pressure, I have noticed there are people who put pressure for one year, multiple RTI applications, complaints, and they do great results. And if you like, get other people also to do the same thing. But then it brings pressure on the system. In front of Oval Maidan are, are some buildings who usually park their cars on the uh, road. in front, And they've been doing it for years. Lately, a government notice has come saying that all these parking spaces belong to government cars because Mantrala is next door. And they've earmarked them for government cars. Now, what does uh, a resident of a society they do. You should go and meet the corporator and say that this needs to change or MLA or MP, whoever you have access to. Hi, sir. My name is Pradav. Uh, so one of the like quips I had, like it's not completely related to any local matter, but it was more re with regards to the number of holidays for the Supreme Court of India. So uh, like recently the CJI pointed out that the our Indian Supreme Court is like one of the highest functioning courts. They work for around 190 days, roughly. So he said that since they are working all seven days a week, uh, it is imperative that they get a lot of holidays. 190 days versus like the year. Uh, any industry that you talk of, any industry does not get this many, this many number of holidays. So I had like, can this be filed? Like on what matrix did they decide that these many holidays should be given? The answer would be there is nothing on record, I guess. What we should be more concerned with is the system not delivering and I, in fact it's one of my passionate topics i give a lot of talks on this also on time bound justice is so easily possible in, in one line let me explain this supreme court in its various decisions has said we need three times or two and a half times the number of judges we have if you have to deliver justice i've analyzed 12 year record of this all, all the courts in the country subordinate courts high courts and supreme court and realize that there are enough sanction positions which are not filled. And filling these, High Court and Supreme Court is clearly the job of the Supreme Court itself, Collegium. They must recommend names. Without their recommending yes, names... Yes, but the Collegium is not transparent, right? They do not... They only the no, final decision is led to the public. That, that, that is bad enough. But even that, they have not ever given enough names to the government to select. See, the Supreme Court must... If there are 100 vacancies in the High Court judges, they must have given... They should have given at least 100 names beforehand. Whereas at times they give two years or one year later after the vacancy occurs. So filling up vacancies, our finding is in, during a 12 year period, the average increase of backlog was two and a half percent per year. The average vacancies was over 21 percent. But by increasing the number of working days, can't this be solved? 
so there, there are a lot of these going on. Look at it like this. If we can get a system to ensure that backlogs decrease, backlogs are increasing every year, year on year. And nobody is paying any attention to that. That is a matter of greater concern in my opinion. Supreme Court judges, holidays judges say we believe we need this. We say you don't need it. So, and one cannot deny the fact that judges do have to do a lot of work at home. So, how much of it? But that's a very minor point. One judge, Supreme Court judge more or less will not make much of a difference to us on a national level. But if the delay keeps increasing, which is what is happening, our rule of law is collapsed. It affects every, the whole nation. It affects our ease of doing business also. It violates the rights of the poor and the marginalized. Which are things we should be concerned about more. I have a question to IDA. I live in Indore and there is a development association called IDA, Indore Development Association. They do create flats, they build flats for low income, high income and middle income people. And through a lottery system, uh, they allot it. It comes under a government, uh, Indore government. So I wanna. Uh, there are lots of uh, 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 controversies around the allotment because it's lottery allotment. So not uh, the. It's not made that clear. So I wanna ask that in five years, how many projects has been developed? How many flats has been allotted? And in which category, high income, low income, middle income. And I want a list of all the lottery allotted uh, names with their names, a flat number, and uh, when the application was filled by the applicant and when the lottery was filled. That, that, my friend, just think of it. For five years, what's your guess of the number of flats? 1100 or something. 1100. Then I think it's, no, because if it's in, Tens of thousands, then it's not possible. No, no. Two to three projects have been made in five years. I see, okay. In which case, ask that. See what response they give you. Yeah, I have. I will ask. Uh, because one thing I must tell you, sometimes people ask for massive information. Mm -hmm. You know, I had one teacher in, uh, when I was the commissioner. She had said, since 1992, government teachers named Seema, I want this information. Now, how in the world is somebody going to do that? 20 years, 30 years record, and Seema naam ke teachers do take out space. And those days, things were not computerized. It's an impossible task. But most people take it like that. So, put it as if you're asking for a record. Transfer that. For example, this rational boy, he did not ask, ki, Actually, that's what he was driving at. He only asked for records which would help him prove something. RTI is not a grievance universal mechanism, really speaking. It is recognizing a fundamental right of getting the information. But that information itself becomes an empowering tool. And the way, once you start using it, it becomes a very interesting game of chess. RTI does not force anyone to keep a record. ITS is Joby record pe hai. What record you should keep, it's assumed, is according to the requirement of the organization. How long you should keep it is again the needs of the organization. ITA does not spell out these things. Jo hai, usme se dene ka. I just wanted to file an RTA, uh, RTA for a uh, police department or something like that. And I just opened their portal and all of their redirects to the officers is says page not found. So, how do I actually find these PIOs to? No, I didn't. All their officers. You think of the administrative unit where you think the information may be available. Think of it. Okay. And find there. If it is the different office and you have been able to find out, they transfer the idea. No, like, who do we address it to? Like, we don't. Public information officer. Let's say it's to do with Bangalore police completely. Then, police commissioner's office. So find out the police commissioner's office address and PIO, police commissioner's office. So thank you very much, uh, Shailesh, for having joined us and given us a very riveting engagement because I'm sure most of you have never thought about these kind of things. So for them to have listened to it with great interest and patience, 
I think itself is a sign that you kind of uh, captivated the audience no, no. with your story. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and, and, and one question. How many of you believe you are Bachchan or Begums of India? We'll remind you of this in a few years time and let me take a picture also. Because that is more important. The other things come automatically, they flow from there.